You know, people really love to take photographs and make them look like traditional artwork, all kinds of different styles. But one of the really popular ones that people want to learn is how to make a watercolor effect. But the problem is a lot of the time it looks artificial or it looks too digital. This tutorial is going to show you how to quickly and easily take any photograph, make it look like a very realistic watercolor. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com, the very best place to learn Photoshop and Lightroom. So I decided I wanted to show you guys a watercolor technique, and so rather than going and looking at what everyone else has done before, what I did is I jumped into Google and searched watercolor photographs, and I spent some time looking at different watercolors and picked out the ones that I really liked, and then I looked at what are the things that make it look like watercolor what were the things that i liked about it and so i experimented spent some time in photoshop and i developed a brand new technique that i'm going to show you right now now by the way these photos i'm using i grabbed from adobe stock and you can get 10 free images in the links underneath where you can get started playing around with adobe stock photographs so you can also apply this to your photos it'll work on any photo okay so the first thing we want to do is duplicate this layer so we're just going to hit Control J and that's Command J on Mac and we're going to make a copy. Now we're just going to go in and apply our watercolor effect. This is our very first step. So what we're going to do is go to Filter and then you're going to find that this is now living under the Filter Gallery. So we're going to click on Filter Gallery and we want to go to the very first set which is Artistic and then go down to Watercolor. Now, if you can't see the whole photo, you can just click the little minus button here and make it fit the screen. Now, there's some settings that I found work really well. And that's just to take the shadow intensity and the texture all the way down and then take the brush detail pretty low to about two. In fact, let's take it up to three for this one. It'll really depend on the resolution of the photo. The higher res, the smaller number you want. The lower res, the higher number you can get away with. So we're just going to click OK to apply this filter. All right, this is our very first step. Now let's do some things here that are gonna make it look a bit more realistic. One of the things I wanna do is add a little black outline, like a pen outline. So I'm gonna take the background and I'm gonna duplicate this again. Control J or Command J one more time. And we're gonna drag this to the top and we'll just call it OL for outline. So what we're gonna do is just create a black outline and we can just go to filter and then we're going to go down to stylize, find edges. And we want to convert this to black and white. So all we need to do is just go to image adjustments, desaturate, or command shift U, control shift U on Windows. Okay, and that just takes the color out. And what we want to do is apply the black and white and hide everything else. So we're just going to change the blend mode of this to multiply. There we go. And if we look at it before and after, you can see it's just kind of adding those dark areas in. So we're gonna hide that for now, and we'll come back to that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select my previous layer because I wanna create a new layer directly above it. So just click the new layer icon, and now we've got a new layer. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna soften this and add some really nice kind of a color effect in there, which is gonna look more like a painterly palette. So what we're going to do is choose a couple of primary colors in here. I'm just going to hit the eye for the eyedropper tool and I'm going to select the yellow and that's going to drop that into the foreground. Now I want to add a background color. So I'm going to hit the alt or the option key and we could choose this dark muddy brown, but I want something a little more color. So we could go for this kind of orange there or even that red there. Let's go for the orangey color though. And notice as I'm holding down the alt or the option key, that adds it to the background color. So right now we've got our foreground background are the two colors that we wanna create our kind of nice warming painting effect. Okay, so we're gonna go now and we're gonna to choose to filter. We're gonna go down to render and we're gonna choose clouds. Notice now we get these clouds at the foreground background. All right, we need these to blend in. And I'm just gonna go under the blend modes here. And by the way, if you wanna know more about blend modes, check out my link underneath that goes through all the different layer blending modes 
inside of Photoshop, and I'll even give you a link to my free ebook. Okay, so let's go down there, and we're going to change this to soft light. Now, you could try different blending modes, but for now, I think soft light is looking pretty good. Now, if you feel like you can still kind of see the clouds in there, we can blur this a little bit. So we'll go filter, blur, and we're going to choose the Gaussian blur. And you want to turn it up just enough. If you look in here that we want those clouds, see, we can see the detail there. We want to just soften them up, but we don't want to go too high because if we go too high, it's just going to get all muddy and it's just going to become one color. So click OK. And now you can see this is giving us a beautiful golden kind of a feel. Now we can have a look at adding our outline on top again. And if you feel it's a little too strong, you can play around. We could try darken mode and we can see that. And in fact, I kind of like darken mode better. All right, we're getting very close to our final effect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to unlock the background. And I want to create a new layer, but instead of it going above, I want it to go underneath. So if you hold down the control or the command key when you create a new layer, it'll drop it to the bottom. And what I want to do here is I'm just going to hide the others just so you can see what I'm doing. And I want to fill this with that nice yellow color. It's a little strong, so let's just hit control U or command U, and we're just going to line that up. So all I want to do is just put a little bit of color in there just for fun. All right, let's turn everything else back on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make it look like this was painted or dabbed on with a brush. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a brush and then we're going to go in and do this effect. So don't go away. You're going to love this. It's the best part of the tutorial. So we're going to create a new document. File new. Let's just go to film and video setting and we'll just do 1080. Click create. So all we're trying to do is create a new document. I want to reset the foreground and background colors. So I'm going to hit the D key and I want to fill this with clouds. So we're going to choose filter, render, clouds. Now, if this is grayed out, make sure that you're in RGB mode. If you're in CMYK mode, none of these render effects will work. So there we go. And all I want to do now is just make a selection. So I'm going to go up to the marquee tools and I'm going to grab the elliptical marquee tool. And I want to draw from the middle, so I'm just going to hold down the Alt or the Option key, and I'm just going to drag it out nice and big to about there. Now, I don't want a hard edge selection here. I want this brush to have a nice soft edge. So what we're going to do is feather this. So we're going to choose Select, and this is where we deal with everything to do with selections. And what we want to do is we want to modify the selection. So we're going to go under Modify and go down to Feather. And then we're just going to click not on the number, but on the words next to it so we can scrub. And we're going to go nice and big, somewhere around 95. That, that'll work. And then click OK. Now we want to turn this into a brush. So we're going to go under Edit. And we're going to go down to Define Brush Preset. This is how we create a brush from a selection. And click OK. And you'll see there's our brush. And we'll just call it clouds and click OK. Now notice that this brush is already selected. And in fact, let me just show you what it's going to do. I'll paint with black and you can see that's what that brush does. And that's perfect for creating the texture that we want for our watercolor effect. And what we want to do is just kind of put everything together. So we're going to just select the top hold down the shift key and click on layer zero. So we've selected these four layers, not the background. And we want to put them together inside of a group. So we're going to hit down command G for group, and that would be control G for group on Windows. And now we've created a group. Now we want to finally, we want to put it inside a mask, but I want to hide everything. So I'm going to hold down the alt or the option key when I click the new layer mask. And what this does is it creates a black mask and it hides all the contents of the mask. Now, if you want to know about masks, I'm also going to put a link as I just did a comprehensive tutorial explaining layer masks. So check that out after this tutorial. Okay, so we know that black hides the contents of the layer. And if we turn this around, hit the X key or click on there. Now we're going to be painting with white. And the white is going to bring it back. If I click, in fact, you can see what it's starting to do. So I'm just going to hit Control Z and to undo it. And I'm going to 
drop the opacity down. See the opacity up here? I want to drop it to about 30. So I'm just going to tap the 3 key and that'll drop it to 30. And in fact, I have a Wacom tablet. So I'm actually going to use my Wacom here. How many of you guys have a Wacom tablet, by the way? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments. So I'm going to go ahead and use this right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of dab in here a little bit. And that's why I'm starting off with a low opacity. So I can just start to dab this in and paint it in. If I hit the left bracket key, I can make that brush a little bit smaller. And then I can concentrate on the areas that I really want to bring into the painting. Now, of course, you could have started with, you know, just a regular mask and masked away those areas using black. But I feel like this gives a nice effect. And then when we do this, it gives us a nice watercolor effect with a nice outline around it. Let me quickly show you another example. Before I do, though, I have a question for you. What kind of photographs do you like to take? And the second question, what camera do you use? Put it in the comments underneath. All right, let's look at a second example really quickly. And I'm just going to speed this one up so you guys can just see the result. I'm going to do exactly the same steps, starting with this photo. And this will show you actually how fast we can do it. I'm not even going to look at the settings. I'm just going to apply that. Let's go to the eyedropper tool. I want that nice yellow. And let's grab that orangey color there. Notice we've got that there, the new layer above. Let's apply the clouds. And this will show you exactly how fast it is to create this effect. We're going to throw that into soft light. Looking great. Unlock that. Let's drop a layer underneath it. Put these together. And of course, you can go back and watch these steps if you want to see exactly how to do this again. I forgot to fill that with my color. Let me just fill this one with white this time. And then we're just going to paint again. So let's do this. And now we're just painting this one in. I'm going to drop that down to 1%. So it just kind of creates a nice effect. And there we go. You can see we can quickly use that on another photo. So that's how fast it is to apply that effect when I'm not giving you the instructions step by step. So anyway, guys, I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, smash that like button into dust. And by the way, don't forget to grab your 10 free images from Adobe Stock. And the great thing about Adobe Stock is that we can actually bring the photographs in. We can use watermarked versions for free. We can experiment with them. And if we like the result, then you can license them. And also, by the way, if you take photographs and you'd like to become an Adobe Stock contributor, anyone can become a contributor. I'm going to give you the link underneath. Uh, go on there, sign up. You can get your photos in front of millions of people and make some extra revenue. So anyway, if you want more tutorials like this, I put out a new tutorial every single Tuesday. So hit that subscribe button and ring that bell right now and you'll be notified whenever I do my tutorial. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.